and then stay standing for a silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could bow for a moment of silent prayer. Amen. Thank you all very much. We've got a lot of people here tonight, a lot of things going on. We do have a uh, place on the agenda for public comment, and we welcome public comment. But please wait until that time. And we'll start right into uh, roll call. Todd Pollock? Here. Chris Leiter? Here. Kenny Green? Here. J.D. James? Here. Toby Melvin? Here. Crystal Hines? Here. <coughs> Sounds like we're all here. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll have a, we'll have approval of the uh, minutes. Motion to approve. Thank you, Kenny. I'll second it. Thank you very much, JD. Any discussion on it, guys? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we have the minutes from the special meeting on March 25th. And on, uh, before we go into these uh, minutes, I would like to tell you all that the Trimble Banner filed a complaint with my office because the agenda was not, uh, uh, it was not as uh, explicit as, as what it should have been. I put on there county payroll, I put on there county road department. I did not want to name anybody in the, on the agenda or anything. But the Trimble Banner, Banner took issue with it and has asked that anything we did during that special meeting be nullifo nullified, uh, which would be appropriate. Uh, what do you think, Crystal? Well, I would have to go and pull my, my agenda. Do you have a copy of the agenda from the special meeting? Uh, I do not, but it was two items on the agenda. It was County Road Department, where we were again going to discuss buying two chainsaws and county payroll uh, because we had some uh, discrepancies on a, a couple of payrolls. The complaint was because of the way it was advertised mm -hmm. in the paper? The, the, the agenda uh, wasn't really clear about what the what we were discussing. If you could send me a copy of that complaint and then okay. I'll comment on that. Okay. I'll do that. Once I have the agenda in hand and the complaint. And both. So we'll move on to the meeting, yes. the minutes. So with that being said, and those two items are going to be nullified, do we approve these minutes? Crystal? You could table this. You could table the approval of these minutes of the special meeting until I review those documents. All right. And you can approve You want to make that motion? Yeah, I'll make Kenny. a motion to table the minutes special meeting the, minutes until okay. the county attorney has had time to review the complaint mm -hmm. and the remedy. All right. And a second. And we have a second. Any discussion on it? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All right. <coughs> thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move right into the treasurer's monthly report. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well I'll, I'll, just, just, I'll just read off of this. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our um, I don't I don't have the, the our total CDs and passbooks total under other investments six hundred and seventy five thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars and twenty seven cents. Um, and then our grand total for our passbooks, CDs, and checking total two million. $377,233.14. Any questions on the monthly? I'll entertain a motion to approve the monthly report. Second. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve oh. the monthly report. All right. Second. 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 Sorry about this. All right. And any discussion on it, guys? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Regina. Now approval of transfers. Well, onto the quarterly. I mean, this is the end of the quarter. So All right. Think, uh, yes, it is. Approve the quarterly. So that is just like the monthly, except for the uh, total amounts received this period, and that this period is for January 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2019. Any questions on the quarterly? So I'll move. Thank you, Kirby. No, second. Second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. All right. Now we'll go into the authorization of claims. Here, transfers. Here. Transfers. transfers. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> In the general fund, we're requesting from the reserve. All of these are from the reserve for transfers: six thousand dollars to courthouse supplies, three thousand dollars to DES coordinator office supplies, and three thousand dollars advertising. In the road fund, we are requesting all from reserve for transfers: um, six thousand dollars. <clears throat> to operating supplies, six thousand dollars to gas and diesel, and three thousand dollars to utilities. And in the LGEA fund, um, <clears throat> the first one, um, the 04-5401596, I typed in court ordered evaluation, and it should be park development. <clears throat> That's the correct line item for that. And we're requesting three thousand dollars from that line item to reserve for transfers. And then from reserve for transfers to park repairs, three thousand dollars. Then uh, for the cash transfers, both of these are from the general fund. Um, Twenty thousand dollars to the jail fund and <clears throat> ten thousand dollars to the LGBA fund. Any questions? We have a motion by Magistrate Leiter to accept. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Uh, Magistrate Jones seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much, guys. <coughs> All right. Okay. But you roll right on, Virginia. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, I'm going to make sure everybody's ready. Uh, in the general fund, um, the court claims. We have uh, for April the pre approved court claims total $29,803.73. And the April court claims are $34,271.53. And then we have a couple of late claims. Did you all get the yeah. late claims? Okay. Right? And that totals uh, $3,184. And that <clears throat> uh, makes a total general fund claims of $67,000. $259.26. Any questions on the general fund claims? I just got one question. Uh, this AFLAC processing service is $324.44. Is that our part of that? Or, mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. like a match? Or, or? Um, that's, they take that that's, out of the, okay. payroll, the payroll. payroll. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Right. Pay that. right, okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, guys? Not on the okay. um, out, of our, out of the animal shelter, uh, I know it's, I brought it up before, but we're paying for two fax lines out there, and I don't understand why we need more than one. And we don't need more than one. And we're still trying to square out some of those phone numbers. Okay. But I'd like to see that corrected when we get a chance. I was told one time that actually one of them is for the park. But it was put in on there. I mean, I don't know. Out of, at the park? At the park. Yeah. Why would they need uh, one I at don't the think, park? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So, but I, don't, I don't think so. Well, it's just about, to get, but I am aware of the situation out there at the animal shelter with all the phone numbers. And, right. Mm. Yeah, I know it's, it's, you know, $500 a year, but it's Right, it's it adds up. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's a lot of dog food. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the general fund the claims and late claims. Thank you, Ken. Do we have a Thank you, Kirby. I had a question on the court Are we on the court claims yet? General fund? Claims? On the general fund, don't Yeah, we? I got a question here. Two uh, two questions. One, uh, the physical soft corporation for $10,400. Mm -hmm. 
Why is that being withdrawn from the training incentive account? That was it's a probably just putting the wrong mm -hmm. wrong code put on because uh, it should not. Okay. Right. I want to make sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Where is it what page are we on there? Two four. Mm -hmm. April four. Thing. Should that be coming from? Yeah, I, I left her a note and asked her to change it to training and education. Training and education. Well, no, wait, wait a minute, that was off. Oh, never mind. Uh, that under register. Uh, where is it? County Judge Executive Office supplies. Okay, and that, that would be it yeah, for the physical for the 10,400. The 10,400, yeah. so, so I'll make sure that's. Okay, and the one right above it, mm -hmm. uh, the drug prevention program for victims. Mm -hmm. For is, is that coming from, I don't understand the person's name that it was made to. I've never seen it before. Well, it was, it, it's a, it was a claim but it, I mean, yeah, I claim, but it should have come out of LGEA. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was made out to this this lady. This was okay. in error, so it, it should have yeah, been made out error. to someone else. Uh huh. Okay. And while we're on general funds, uh, oxygen supplies for out of the general fund. Should that be the road department or hey, coming Willis. from Taylor? Oh, the oh, is that what it was? It says maintenance and repair. Damn, probably road. Okay. Uh, I just wondering why. Unless the ambulance the gets. You get any air from? We get oxygen. It's yeah. okay for Taylor. Yeah. Okay, so that's where that was at. Okay. All right. All right. Then another one up here from the training incentive. We got one for Judge Pollock mm -hmm. and one for Magistrate Jones and one for the Deputy Judge. I didn't know that the Deputy Judge was under training and sending no, that training and education. Yeah, it should here. be education. Okay. That's yeah. where we went to that conference. Yeah, but in January. Yeah, but it should be under that a different was account. Today, Chris. That was what? That was corrected today. Okay, I mean I just wanna make sure it's coming to the right account. So. Mm -hmm. All right, well we're on general funds, uh animal shelter had repaired the furnace blower. Who, who, where did we take bids on that? Or we that just was probably it? Henry County probably called them out. Oh, so Henry County called Is that what that is? We and this not. is our part of that? Yeah, we did not, yeah. Okay, because I'd like to see us use our people that work on furnaces and stuff in the county first or any other business. I'd like to use, you know, but if Henry County called it, that's Yeah, they called it. Okay, well, we do with that. <clears throat> That's a, let's see. That's all I have on general funds. Sorry. Okay. Oh, no, don't be sorry. All right, move right along. Oh, okay. oh, all right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. Now move right along. Okay, in the road fund, the April pre approved claims total $1,397.12. And the April court claims total $25,151.01. There are no uh, April road fund claims, so the total road fund claims are $26,548.13. Any questions on any road fund claims? I, I, had, I have one. We got a, did we buy three chainsaws or did we just buy two? <laughs> Two. Can we buy two new chainsaws? Yeah. Alright. At our last meeting we approved for five hundred dollars and it looks like we spent six hundred and thirty three dollars and eighty cents. Is there something besides chainsaws? No, just uh case oil and chains. Okay, okay. So that all right. Yeah, the price the, okay. Stuff, so okay. we got oil every oil and everything's included on that. Yeah. On that ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I I so it says the solids for sales was like four something on that, or did I read it wrong? Yeah. I think that's right. I don't I remember no, seeing that. Well, I was not seeing one here. One ninety nine. Yeah, one ninety nine a piece. So it was like four something with the. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I just, then you start adding the bar oil and change. Change for the other solids. All right. I just want um, just. I didn't know what we bought, so I just yeah. want to make sure. It was, uh, I read Mike, it. who's that parts master that you're dealing with here? Yeah. I mean, who who is? I, I don't know his name. Uh, that young guy was always had coming. Okay, I mean, I didn't. Is he local here? Or? 
Okay. Yeah. He got so many on each bin, so yeah. he takes care of it. I just he see him on here pretty often. Yeah, he takes care of all that. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to accept the road claims? Yeah, I make a motion to accept them. Thank you, Chris. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Kenny. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, <clears throat> for the jail fund, uh, we don't have any people pre-approved. And our April court claims total $14,329.44, and there were no late claims. So that made a total of $14,329.44. Any questions on the jail? Do I have a motion to accept them claims? <coughs> JD. All right, do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Uh, all right, thank you all. All right. And uh, in the LGEA fund, the April pre-approved claims total $2,299.64. Our um, February, February, April, I'm sorry, February court claims are $5,978.11. No late claims. So that made a total of $8,277.75 in the LGEA fund. Yeah, I got a question about the, on the LGA funds. Mm -hmm. I look back and look like last month at the baseball number one field, we spent eighteen dollars. I'm assuming it was minimum. And I'm just asking. I knew I thought Billy said we had a water leak. Yeah. So this month it was four hundred twenty dollars in a penny of the reason. water bill. The water bill was that probably before water leak? he found it. Yeah, that's probably how much before he got to it. Okay. What did it do? The fix? pipes froze up. Yeah, it is so fixed. fixed. So that's yeah, where that cost is coming cold. from. Yep. Right there, the leak. Yeah. All right. That's all right. I figured that's probably what it was. So. Make a motion on the LGE. All right. Thank you, Kirby. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. No second. All right. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. And then we have the gross wages and the reports. So okay. Bring all the reports. All right. Fantastic. Uh, and also, before I just wanted to update everybody on the overpayment on the 941. It looks like <clears throat> it, it um, the, the, the total was a total of $60,004.33. Um, for some reason, they didn't sweep out $15,433.51. So all, all we have to, uh, as a credit, it's forty-four thousand five hundred and seventy dollars and eighty-two cents. Um, on our April the fifth payroll, we had um, uh, fourteen thousand five seventy-seven seventy-eight. So we didn't pay anything to them. We just took that as the credit. So we have a balance credit with the IRS of twenty-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-three dollars and four cents. It should be paid probably middle of May. So hopefully we'll. Do you think they'll just carry it as a credit mm -hmm. and then they, car they carry it as a rather credit? Rather than mm -hmm. okay. reverses. So. All right. All right. We will move right along to, uh, I'm going to skip the department reports that are on the agenda just because we have uh, Secretary Greg Thomas here from the Department of Transportation and uh, Matt Bullock. Uh, the floor is yours, gentlemen. Yeah, there you go. I'm trusty printer. All right, thanks for having us tonight. Uh, my name is Matt Bullock. For those of you who uh, are new, are all memberships new this go around? I'm, I'm old. You're old, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back. Um, I'm here to, uh, uh, Matt Bullock, Chief District Engineer for Department of Highways in District 5, that's the local office, and we cover eight counties, um, Trimble County being one of those counties, and we come every year uh, to talk about our uh, resurfacing program on what we call RS roads, which are the rural secondary classified roads, those are generally the roads that are um, lower volume, a lot of times I say that the four digit roads, sometimes they're three digit roads. Um, 
I also want to introduce some of my people here. I have uh, Andrea Clifford here on the ends, who is our public information officer. Uh, she's been doing that for almost 20 years now. And she's going to, I said almost 20 years, and uh, she's going to retire in August or July, July 31st. So um, let's see, I got Blake Nelson back here, who's one of our engineers in our section office in uh, Newcastle. But uh, the Newcastle office covers Henry and Trimble counties. Uh, anybody else here for more? Okay. Uh, you'll talk to uh, our secretary, Greg Thomas, here uh, after I'm done. And I don't know that uh, I've been doing this for 12 years, and I know for sure that in my 12 years we never had a secretary of transportation come to a fiscal court meeting in Trimble County. So, you know, it should be uh, pri privileged and thankful that he's here today. <laughs> All right, jumping right in. So, uh, back to the rural secondary program. Uh, it is a program that is uh, distributed amongst 120 counties and it's based off the gas tax. Uh, some of y'all or all of y'all may have heard of the FIS formula. It's a formula that uses the gas tax, percentage of the gas tax, and distributes uh, funds through the Office of uh, Rural and Municipal Aid in Frankfurt. Uh, Commissioner Gray Tomlin uh, is the one who runs the programs there. Uh, but there are five parts of that formula. I'm not going to go into what five parts those are because I always get it wrong, but the, they have to do with your rural area, uh, your rural classified road mileage, uh, your rural population, and there's two other parts, which I always forget. Um, so once you get that distribution, uh, oh, the, another part is equal distribution amongst the 120 counties. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, on your, your long sheets that you guys see that y'all have, that is where your allotment, your annual allotment comes. Uh, out to um, and we use that fu those funds for maintaining the state RS classified roads in your county and if you see at the uh, top under the length under the first um, rural secondary or routine maintenance of traffic there's a number 69.05 that is actually how many miles with the mileage of rural secondary classified roads are in Trimble County and amongst my eight counties, it's one of the lowest ones, so you're doing pretty well. We're able to keep on top of y'all's rural classified state roads pretty well because of that low mileage. But there is a cost per mile of us uh, taking care of those, and that is approximately uh, almost $5,500 a mile. And you multiply that, you get about $380,000 approximately. Uh, so those are just maintenance costs for your pothole patching, strip patching, your mowing, uh, off the roadside, ditches, drainage, and so forth. Just ma general maintenance of the roadways. Uh, so once you take that out, and there is a county judge expense, which is for, for you to administer the program in your county and work with the Office of Local Program, not the Office of Local Programs, or uh, Rural Municipal Aid, um, that is $2,400. So what's left over after those two items we have to put towards resurfacing on the RS roads. So our recommendation for this year is Liberty Road, which is Kentucky 2890. And we're going to do the resurfacing on that from uh, the beginning of the state maintenance uh, to Kentucky 1256, which is Denton Lane. And that uh, is about 2.6 miles. Um, the second item down there is a kind of a generic line item. We plan to do some crack sealing on a bunch of roads. Um, about $90,000 worth. Uh, we don't have all those determined this time. We're going to see how far we can go with what we have left over. But that's a preventative maintenance item. We're, we won't necessarily come back and put anything over top of those crack seals. So in places where we do this, it's going to be the rubbery looking black shiny stuff that kind of looks like snakes on the roadway. Um, that'll be a preventative maintenance thing that'll get some more life out of the road and uh, make them last a little bit longer until we get to the point where we have to do actual resurfacing on those. Um, so while I'm talking about preventative maintenance, I'll go ahead and mention that we're planning to do the entire stretch of US 42 in Trimble County, so Henry County to Carroll County line. And it's another preventative maintenance treatment and it's called microsurfacing. So it's not again the inch and a quarter complete resurfacing overlay. It is where we put down a, uh, a smaller aggregate. If you've ever seen uh, our high friction surfaces in some places where it uh, kind of almost looks like it's um, 
not shiny, but uh, like there's little tiny crystals in there when your headlights hit it, but it's a real small aggregate in a, in a um, um, asphalt emulsion that keeps it on there and it increases the friction level of the road. Well, microsurfacing is similar to that. The aggregate's a little bit bigger. And again, this is a preventative maintenance treatment that will extend the life of the road. And it's not something where we can afford to do the entire 40, or US 42 through the entire county. So this preventative maintenance treatment is a little bit cheaper, but it's gonna extend the life of the road and it'll buy some time until we can come back and do the full-blown inch and a quarter resurfacing. Um, the uh, ARS program is, of course, an annual thing. It runs from fiscal through the fiscal year. Our fiscal year starts in July, on July 1st and runs through June 30th of next year. So the ARS funds for your county for this year become available July 1st. Uh, we usually get these projects in the uh, rural secondary program ready to go as soon as possible in the spring and early summer so we can generally have completion dates by the end of the year. Sometimes when we're adding things to the end of the um, schedule we'll have to push some of those completion dates into next year and if that's the case then it'll have a completion date of June 30th of 2020 but uh, we're meeting with you guys relatively early in the, in the cycle here we should be able to get this one in there through procurement and, and uh, ready to go so we can have a probably like a November 1st completion date and of course the contractor can get out there and do it as soon as he can but that's just the time he has to have it done um, let's see, last year for our RS program, we recommended Morton Ridge Road, which is uh, 2868, and I'm told that that is actually not complete yet, and that's one of those that's got a June 30th completion date. So here by the uh, beginning of summer, you'll see that Morton Ridge gets completed, and that's about four miles of that roadway. Uh, also last year, you all chose to uh, Keep your flex funds, the 20% out of the program, and the recommendations from your all side was Richmond Hill Road, Alexander Road, and Gills Ridge Road. I don't know whether or not those have been completed or not. Do you Al happen to know? Alexander has. Okay. I do know. All right. Sure. So we do the, through our office, we do the reimbursements for those. And, okay. All right, so uh, the drill is for you guys, you can make a, uh, a motion uh, ex to accept our recommendation today. Uh, you can table it and do it at your next fiscal work meeting. We just ultimately need a, uh, some kind of document that you accept our program. If you have a alternative that you want to do, uh, we're also okay, this is a two-way street. We're not uh, just here to tell you exactly what we always, uh, what you need to do. Uh, hopefully by now that there's already been some communication on what that might be. Uh, so you all can accept it tonight or, or pass the next time. We just need some kind of documentation ultimately for us to get it through the procurement system. And I'll make a motion to accept. Yeah, I'll second it. <clears throat> Any discussion on that, guys? All those in favor of accepting that? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Well, that was easy enough, yeah. Matt. <laughs> Thank you for Secretary. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, thanks for the invitation. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Glad to have yeah, you. First time we've met, I think. Yes. So. Thanks for coming. So, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll be real quick, but from a cabinet pers perspective, we're all about focusing on the governor's vision and direction, which just amounts to jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, he's brought in and his watch over 51,000 jobs now over 18 billion worth of investment and in our opinion we, we need to keep that going uh, it's going to help us get out of our financial challenges in Kentucky uh, but uh, in, for, in terms of what the cabinet is all about we I don't know if you've heard about shift but it's our scoring m uh, model that we use for all the projects across the Commonwealth that we use to, to judge projects and prioritize projects and with that, we're on the second cycle. With that, we've been able to take a road plan that's 200% over-programmed, meaning if you had a project in there, it's likely it's a 50-50 chance of whether it will actually get done or not to an 8% over-programmed program, which we we're thankful uh, that the legislators, in the end, it's their program, but in the end, they worked with us to prioritize, prioritize that. Um, and along with that, our, our General Assembly agreed that we should focus more on <coughs> bridges and pavements and our infrastructure, and we took a road plan that was about two-thirds capital projects, meaning the, the ribbon-cutting projects, 
and one third maintenance to about 50-50. So we, we're proud of that as well. So things are working well in terms of our, our road plan, um, and which kind of brings us to why we're here today. But <coughs> we, we felt like that it's time to get out and talk to folks that know, know what their needs are the best. Local folks know best. And so um, we realize there's not only 27,000 miles that we take care of every year, but there's also 80,000 miles total, counties and cities combined. And so the governor is interested in infrastructure in total. And so he does have some discretionary funding available. We are uh, not, as, not interested in the political jobs at all, but in jobs and projects that contribute to direct job growth, to job retention, or you may just have some critical, critically, critical uh, repair projects that are unfunded that, that need to be addressed. And so we're here basically to listen, but also to offer a, a partnership, if you will, if there are areas that we can help, then we're taking that, you know, the districts are evaluating it. And also I want to introduce Nick Vanover. Nick, are you, Nick is uh, a real secondary, he's, he's, he's here as well. And so we can evaluate those roads uh, get them into the request and, and submit them for approval to the governor. So that's why we're here is to listen. So, but thank you for the opportunity to speak to you and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. you coming. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Any questions? If there are, we. Well, well I want to say thanks. You know, okay. Nick has been coming out. He's been out a couple of times yeah. already, and uh, we've been working with him and our. State or our county road supervisor, okay. uh, looking at different roads that we could apply for. Okay, on the discretionary. On the discretionary. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. So that's good. So the conversation. Well, it doesn't have to. We don't. We don't need any input tonight. But just if right. you have, if you have, while well, your magistrates are here, if you've got some special needs, then and it's get uh, on the I've list. been and asking them to to give us some roads okay. that they have in mind, sure. and, uh, and we've had good feedback because we have some that are then that really need attention need. that we're hoping to include, include on that. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, well thank you. Well, we'll get out of your hair if that's I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Have at it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you, you all. all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Are you going to give all this fun up? Are you going to give all this fun up? I think so. <laughs> All right, now we'll move right into the department reports, and we'll start out with our uh, animal control, J uh, Greg Schwartzmiller. Okay. Last month, we took in 30 animals. Uh, we Owner surrenders, uh, strays came up to about 30. We had a couple holdovers from last month. So total output for last month was actually 31 animals. We'd have had to do two euthanasias due to health purposes. Uh, January, February, and March, we had a total of 91 animals brought in and we placed 87 of those. So we're doing pretty good on adoptions and returned owners. Those. Um, now, I did have to spend a little bit of money down here. We had a mini refrigerator that we store the dog vaccines in. It wasn't cooling, so we had to replace it. And one of the water hoses we need to use to wash the candles down, I need to replace. I notified the judge's office and they turned a receipt in for that. It was, I'm not sure, about $130 or something for everything. Uh, we are need, going to need approval to get a, a back door for the animal shelter because it's rusting out. It's got some major cracks on the inside. I mean, it tried being repaired, but it's not holding up. And since the warmer weather's coming in, we'd like to know if we can get a couple of ventilated fluorescent vests. I don't know if the road department had us anything extra that we can get or look into getting to. You might be one or two. Right? I, have, I have some that I got from the sheriff's department I can get you. Okay, so they'll take care of that. Um, the uh, young lady from 
Henry County that did the fundraising and brought some food down for the animals. I did send her a thank you card. Let her know her efforts were appreciated. Uh, last month he asked me about, you know, taking care of cats. Well, the shelter when it was built there seven years ago was not set up for just the house cats at all. So I looked into uh, the spay neuter mobile. It no longer exists. I checked with the uh, Henry County Animal Clinic over there, and they want to spay neuter animals. They want 75 to spay, $50 to neuter a cat, and euthanasia and disposal of any cats is $100 a piece. And since we don't have any provisions to house them there, you'd be looking at you know euthanasia of all the animals, and if you get a very low minimum of a cat a day, you're looking at $3,000 a month. Uh, if you're looking at a, a new building, which probably going to cost you over $250,000 because the old the existing one was $200,000, you need air handlers. It's going to be capable of uh, 30 air changes an hour, plus an extra air handler for a quarantine room. Cat specific cages, they're stackable, that contain all fecal urine, uh, you know, for the upkeep of them. And I can't see spending that kind of money because I don't know anybody that's going to give you $75 or $100 a cat for adoptions. You know, when there's, you put a can of cat food outside, you get all you want. There is an alley cat program that's I'm not sure who they're run through. I think it's out of the uh, Humane Society. Yeah, Humane Society out of Louisville. Now this is strictly a residential program, <coughs> resident program. Now the residents would have to contact the alley cat, obtain a live trap from them, and have to leave a deposit for the cost of the live trap to make sure it's returned. The residents will trap the cats. They would have to transport the cat to the partici to participating veterinary clinic to be spayed or neutered and an ear tip clipped. Then the resident would have to pick the cat up from there, return it to the same area that was trapped in, trapped, release the, the animal and return the traps to the alley cat program to get their deposits back. So that's all I got on that. And like I said, it's, you're looking at a lot of money for, for taking care of them. But uh, like I said, we do need a back door to the building. So I don't know and you need a microwave too. Yeah, we can definitely use a microwave down there. Um, Have you got a price on any kind of back doors? No, I just, I I've been out there, wasn't nobody there, but I, it looks like a steel door. From yeah, my it's memory. a steel door. I think it's four foot. Uh, the inside, they had tried to do some spray coat to hold the rust down, but I mean, it's it's got cracks down through it. I don't know if anybody in the county does that, or you know, who who we approached. Uh, to even you know see about that. You know, I don't know if there's any contractors you all use here. You know if you have anybody's idea, you know who can do that. You know yeah, I, I think the judge or somebody can get in touch with them to look at it. It's below a certain dollar amount. We don't have to advertise right. to bid or anything. So right. we could probably just get somebody local to. Okay. Like I said, it's it's still holding up, but it's I mean, it's getting bad. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that yeah. Yeah, and it's really going to cost that. Yeah, it ain't going to cost that for the microwave and all of it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need it. A lot of stuff don't need it. You don't need it for yeah. a while. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I'd like bringing this up in front of you all so you know what's going yeah. on with us. Uh, any, um, we have enough donated dog food probably to last us through the end of the month, maybe into, what is it, end of May. So we're doing good that way. If we keep getting donations, you know, which really helps. You know, at least it cuts down on that expense. Um, any other questions you all have for us? Very good. I appreciate you doing this, Greg. But is uh, Jacob, is he ever going to come to one of the meetings? He's, or is he he's shy. pretty busy? He, or? Yeah, he, well, he's he doesn't shy. like public speaking, so well, I'm trying okay. to get him All right, well, I appreciate you fired up. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the report. <laughs> all right. Yes. All right. We'll move right along to uh, Road Department. Mr. Stewart. Okay. Didn't recognize you. Come in here in blue jeans and a nice shirt. How about that? Got two covers we put in. We took on a job for Kirby Day. Got it took care of. 
Down ditching, down some of them portaling stuff or where everything's been running good. Pretty smooth. Seen them I went and got them changed and that oil, that's when I seen them saws. Okay, I, yeah. I had them bought first and yeah. then I come back and said something to him about the saw. Yeah, I didn't I didn't, I didn't so that's where that went over a little bit. Took care of Garrett Lane too. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Trees. Took yeah. care of that. Picked up a mattress from Bug Springs. Yeah, Appreciate that. Picking up. Yeah. <laughs> on Hardy Creek, it's like way down there. And, and measuring, getting some measurements down there at Cooper's Bottom and stuff. Yeah, well, because we're going to try the discretionary for that. Yeah. And I appreciate the work that, you know, we had to took a beating this winter. And <clears throat> having that loader down there just to keep the ditches cleaned out and moving. Need another cleaner right now. I know. I know. I drove through this morning. Mike, do you see any uh, equipment coming up, any major equipment coming up needed here in the near future? No. <coughs> Trucks, probably. You know, if you're going to get anything at all. Well, I think the one sitting out burrows, what we haven't done to it. The opinions in the front of it, we didn't have tools and stuff to take care of that, <coughs> so we had to take it out there. Ricky couldn't get it to come out. So. I welded in there more. Than that. You talking about single axle or, or yeah. tandem? Yeah, uh, no, it's a tandem. In the no, front I'm talking end. about in, in the trucks. Yeah, single. Yeah. Singles. yeah. And what about Singles. last year? They, when we were riding around, you said you, you wanted a different way of spreading the cinders. You wanted a roll instead of the. Yeah, the them box go back to the boxes. Yeah. You know, they just does so much better, so right. much easier to deal with. For cinders instead of set up for salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many of them we got? Four. We've got two for the we went on one each for the five fifties yeah. and uh what we did I got four, four more. Okay. And we got one for one of them bigger trucks, right. the flatbed. Mm -hmm. That makes three. Yeah, about four more and I think covered off. Yeah. I think I had this kind of thing on them or something been on one time. I checked it out I believe. Yeah. Got it somewhere out there. Like price something like that, you know what I'm saying? Get some price. Oh yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you, the job. Have you got a list of which roads you think need to be paved? I mean, that's great that this guy told us which road to pave. Yeah, I've got them. But I've got them all broke down. Would, and miles from. I kind of smile. I kind of want, you know, know that to be your opinion, and we well, go I with took what that you guy, want. I one guy with me. Okay. And I well, told, a couple I told, of times. Yeah, a couple of times. That's great. Showed him a bunch of roads and a, a few more that I should have took him on. You know, I had them look at them till later and I got to looking down. You no, know, on the state roads, basic. they have actually like a camera on the back of the truck that goes right down there yeah. the cracks and I think. You know, the depth and all that. Yeah. yeah. So, I know they the, grade them. We got some bad roads. Ways. You know, pretty bad shape, really. That's county and yeah. secondary state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea, I reckon. You know, anything else? Keep up with the work. All right, buddy. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Tell him we said thanks out there, okay? All right, buddy. All right, we'll move right along to EMS Director Will McCoy. Oh, yes, thank you while we're here. Hey, Mike, before you go, you see these, these signs. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you guys saw this in your packets. Uh, Mike had talked about getting some new signs because they were falling off, some of the old ones on the truck. So these were uh, some estimates I got from that Econo signs. And it can be any color. This is just the colors that they showed. I think uh, you liked the red, didn't you? Yeah, I think it stand out a little bit. Blue and gold's great with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, we ain't in school now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you guys, uh, what do y'all think about these? I thought the prices were pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, if they need to be replaced, I think we need to go ahead yeah. and get them. Yeah, yeah some of them have them, some of them don't. Right. And yeah. it'd be nice to have them all the same. Yeah, all the same. All of our, all of our yeah. equipment ought to be identified. Yeah, yeah. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to get the signs that we need. Okay. In a second. All right. And any discussion on it? Any color's fine, real. Oh, good. <laughs> Pink. If he wants red, get him red. Have you seen this all the way? Have you seen this all the way? All right. Yep, pink. All those in favor? All right. 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 All
<laughs> Thank you all very much. Thanks, Chris, for bringing that up, too. Uh, go ahead, Will. Um, start off with, uh, we got the uh, garage door opener replaced as you all approved. Um, so it's taken care of. Um, all three trucks are in working order. Uh, got one getting an oil change right now. Um, we've ran 284 calls this year so far. So other than that, uh, we've also hired a new employee to uh, take the open full-time position. She'll start on the 19th. New truck's on its way. It's on its way. They're, t they're telling me June. Telling you when? June? June. June. Okay. It was going to be May, but uh, Ford had a recall on the cap chassis. And you filled the one open position, you said? Yes, sir. <coughs> We're still building all the runs, right? Correct. And Will, when is that day to go up there in Ohio? Uh, May 9th. May 9th. If any of y'all would like to go up there and, and see the place where they're putting this ambulance together, it's on May 9th. Yes, I don't have a time yet. I don't. I don't remember. It, it'll be up in the morning. Yeah, but it's an all-day thing, and we'll leave here every morning and be up there all day long to see how this goes on May 9th. And how soon do you need to know? Um, as soon as possible, so they can okay. get your all's credentials and stuff for the plan. So if you all want to go to that, please get with Will and uh, get on the list. All right, what else you got? That's all I have right here. Let's Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask about. That's Is that Striker? Um, Is that a wish list? I'm not real sure what that is. Oh, that is uh, from a demo that uh, they had came out and uh, showed showed us. It's a uh, it, it is a wish list. Uh, it is uh, of the Life Pack 15. It's a cardiac monitor for two of them. Um, they're now allowing uh, EMTs to do cardiac monitors and then transmitting the the material to the hospital. The doctor interprets it and tells you if you're the person's having a heart attack or not and it gives you a better opportunity to to treat the patient and get them where they need to go yeah and this is this is something i put in the packets guys to be thinking about for next year uh, on our budget this uh box i'm trying to think what it's called uh is is a matter of life and death for a lot of people if someone is having a heart attack or they think they're having a heart attack, this machine, they hook the leads up to it. It communicates via the internet with the hospitals, with the doctors, and they're able to tell the our ambulance people to take them to Jewish or Norton's instead of LaGrange or Carrollton, uh, and it could save a life. It Straight is, into a cath lab. Right. And, it's, and I put it in the packets for something uh, for you all to be thinking about uh, coming up real soon are we yeah. still <clears throat> excuse me when somebody has a heart attack like that don't we have to go to the nearest facility um they are if we have suspect if we suspect a heart attack we do go to the nearest facility but if we're transmitting that they can tell us to, to either fly the patient out to a to a cath lab um, or drive into a cath lab and avoid the time delay going to a hospital that doesn't have the facility to treat them. That's for that's for both of them. Yeah, for two. In that for two, and yes, sir. for yes. two. Right. <clears throat> two, two of our ambulances are like transports, especially when we get the new one. And okay. I'm just inclined to think this will save a life. And it can work for children as well as adults. Uh, well, when we get into our, our budget talks, we'll see yes, what we can. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our wish list sort of thing. Got anything else for us, Will? No, sir. All right. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Any more questions for him, guys? We pick it up any trans uh, anymore? Um, currently, we have no reoccurring transports, but uh, Carroll County Hospital is uh giving us about two a week okay so thank you all right thank you will 
All right, we'll move right along, keep it with emergency, and go to Andrew Stark. Very good news. Uh, the, uh, I guess FEMA, CRC, and uh, Texas uh, met with Chris and told him about it. They finally approved um, us being able to spend the money to fix Cooper Bottom. So that's, uh, let's see, I'll take that number. This is going to four. $442,358.50, which they will pay $331,768, and then the state will pay 13% uh, of what's left over. So that leaves us with roughly $53,000 that we have to pay out of pocket. So what that allows us to do now is to go out and we can secure bids or you know, start the procurement process for fixing those roads. And then I'm still waiting on the uh, Daughtery and North Stillman to get passed. So once that gets done, we can go for everything. And then um, talked with Regina the other day, and we did receive our check for debris management, which was $33,459. So that was in our, um, I guess, whatever fund that went into. I think it wrote the fund. Roads. So that was to reimburse all the county employees that worked, you know, throughout. So uh, Todd asked me to talk about storm readiness, and um, there's a whole lot you can talk about with storm readiness. So I didn't really know where to go, uh, but I would say tornadoes. Uh, well, what I was going to say was we changed systems, um, like 911 systems, a while back. And a lot of people don't know that. We changed to a system that's called RAVE instead of Code Red. We probably signed up for Code Red a long time ago. And we actually changed to RAVE. So if you have a landline, it automatically got put in. But if you have a cell phone and don't have a landline, you have to register yourself. So I have a whole bunch of flyers for anyone who wants to take one. Uh, it's really easy to register. Or you can even call me and leave a voicemail, and I'll register your for you. So, um, it's uh, basically you can get any alert, traffic, uh, weather, if there's a hazmat, you name it. And then um, this is not just for us, it's actually for Henry and Owen. So it's all a partnership. So, um, and that's funded through the 911 board, the 911 boards. Um, so as for tornadoes, um, one thing I did find out was that the uh, the siren at the sewer plant was fixed, but the one at the city building was not fixed. They're waiting on a, a guy to bring a part from somewhere. So that's what they're hopefully waiting on. Is that in Milton? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, the one at the actual office. Right. So, um, Jane and the guy from Jane and he said hopefully next week. So, we'll see. You guys have any questions? Yeah, so what's our next move on? The FEMA project. That's what I'm going to ask you all. What What would you all like to do? That That is a reimbursement program, is it not? Yeah. yeah so we have to spend it up front and then hope to get reimbursed. Is, it, is that repairs to the county to road Cooper's department? Bottom. That the flood caused in 2009. Down yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's three different projects. Three different, three different, different yeah. places where the roads slipped away. They're all county roads. Yeah, they're, they're all county yeah. roads. And that's that's right. Wait, we, but we don't have it right here. I don't know. Does FEMA same. give you a detailed list of what they want? Yes. Done? Yes. They do. Okay. That's, so and when that's you do the bid, bid specs, Andrew's got to bid what it would. Okay. Here, I can do that if you want. Yeah. So we send that out for bid. They do exactly what's on. Yeah. Exactly. And we right. say we want you to do this. Nothing more. Nothing more. Nothing less. Okay. Yep. Starts. It's pretty deep up right here, and then this is site one, site two, site three. Okay. Hmm. Well, I also have that for uh, North Spelman and Dodger Creek, too. I think it's approved. I mean, I'm approved yet. Yeah. Anyway, the Dodger sure Creek and Spelman is not. Yeah, have, they right. went through the process. Yeah. They're right. in there, they just haven't right now. been checked off. I mean, I think we need to move forward on it. Do we have groups that, who do we send this out to bid for? Do we have certain companies that will 
Probably down there. Posted like you would any other bed. Yeah, we'll post it in there. Ideally, the one company that gave us the estimate, they're probably going to be spot on with whatever our estimate was. But right. if, and that's, if that's we can the, find somebody else, hopefully. They, they specialize in the sparing. And right. Yeah. Um, so I think there's only like five companies in all the state that actually do that. Right. So I think the name of that was GSI Consultants or something like that. Yeah, and we can reach, well, we'll just reach out to them and say, hey, we would like you to bid on this sealed bid. Uh, we could open up bids at our next meeting <coughs> and advertise it in the local paper. Local as well, right? And probably want and those guys that were here they may know somebody too but i'm sure the state does a lot more than kind of this all their roads call them asking for a for list, a list of, of yeah credible contractors the state has a list of pre-qualified contractors that they use and uh, i don't know would you want somebody similar to that to do this work mm -hmm. yes All right. So what do you how do y'all want to go forward on this? I think Chris made motion to move forward on it. Yeah, I think we need to okay. go ahead and advertise it for bids. All right. We have a motion on the floor to move forward on this to go ahead and advertise for bids. <coughs> and do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Kirby. Any more discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. All right. We'll move right along. We have Sheriff. Tell us what you've been up to. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Masters. I don't know if you guys uh, know it, but your EM director is the only direct hit tornado survivor in the county. Mm, yes. Okay. Yeah. He survived the, the tornado that blew the, the fire department down up here years ago. So, so he has direct knowledge of torna tornado safety. Mm. I won't tell you how he survived, but <laughs> it's a good story. Uh, hey, I'll cut into your thing real quick. The, we did have some misinformation on the last one that went through, so try to make sure that you get your information from a good source. I'll just say that. Was it fake news? Yeah. I didn't put it out, so I no, 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 no. There's no way in this room. So uh, I don't know if any of you have seen the new Explorer running around uh, Mitchell replacing the Caprice. But, uh, that he hit the deer with. Um, it's a good looking vehicle to use. Uh, pretty much the insurance money paid for the new vehicle, I think, was a couple thousand dollars off, but it was pretty close. Um, I paid, and the only other thing, unless y'all have any questions, is I paid the first quarter salaries back uh, last week to the tune of uh, $64,294.64. <clears throat> and that actually went into the, a little bit into the second quarter, so. Uh, that pay period went into the second quarter of that, that little ways. So, but that's paid back. So we'll move on to second quarter, and hopefully at the end of that quarter, we'll have enough to pay that back too. Then I'll just have to borrow money until the end of the year. <laughs> if you close. don't mind. We're pretty close. <laughs> it's never ending. <laughs> that's right. It is vicious. It's a vicious cycle. So, right. any questions for me? Questions, gentlemen. <clears throat> And in, in front of you there is that sheriff's budget. Kenny, you got yours in your packet? I do, yeah. Okay. Well, it, I seen you had yes, it. Yes, I think I think you had it further down the agenda as well. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and knock it out while we got the sheriff on the floor. That way, if, if y'all have any questions about it, he's the man to answer. Sheriff's budget. All right. Thank you, Kenny. For the calendar year of 2019. Which one? That the annual statement. I'll show you. Thank you, Kirby. All right. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Aye. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. All right. Now from our jailer, Bobby Temple. Good afternoon, ladies. <laughs> and gentlemen, <laughs> not again, Crystal. <laughs> All right. In uh, February, I believe we had 52 people in incarcerated. This month, we have 43. Uh, the judge wanted to know a little bit about, about how many I hauled, such as that. 
Well, as it turns out, we had 35 new ones we took to Carroll County a whole last month. 11 went to Car Oldham County. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Have four long-termers in Old Carroll County, five in Oldham County. Now this does not, this is like I said, it comes out to what is it, 43 people, the, the new ones, or 37, 47. I can't even think of Nervous. Anyway, a lot of these people are not just one trip. They get arrested, take them to jail. Now I've got to bring them back and back and back and back. So most of these are three trips. Not counting new arrestees, we went three different times this last month, but to Boone County, Fed County, and another county. I left early, went and got them, brought them court, took them back to save us the $34 on each one overnight stay. Uh, we had a few that we had to take from Carroll County to Oldham County for court, and then back to Carroll County. It's not counting the people we come in at night and bond out. I mean, there's several we've come in and we've bonded out that don't get taken to jail. Uh, I guess that's it. Unless you all have a question about something else or somebody or anything. Sounds good. Appreciate you. Thanks, Thanks you, Bob. Show Show hands hands Bob. <laughs> yeah, keep up the good work. Thank, Thanks, you, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and I'm going to skip around, guys. I want to introduce Michael Gritton from Kentucky and it works. Uh, Michael, you get up and talk I'm a little bit about too. Kentucky and it works. Good. Members of the court, Michael Gritton, Thanks. Kentucky and it works. Uh, in case you haven't heard, it, hopefully you've heard of this, but if you haven't, we're something called a workforce investment board. Congress invests and the president invests in workforce through a law called the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. The money flows from the federal government to the state. Each governor can hold on to 15% of the money and spend it on workforce projects. The other 85% comes down to boards of directors. Kentucky Anna Works is the board that represents the seven counties that you would know, Louisville and the six regional counties, including Trimble, right? I'm here uh, primarily just to explain to you how the money works because part of what we've asked the judge to do is to sign an agreement that makes us the fiscal agent for that money for another two years. You all signed onto that before, um, as have all of the seven counties. So there's an interlocal agreement that explains how all this stuff would work. In a worst case scenario, if we were ever found to have misspent money and had disallowed costs, those disallowed costs would be spread across the seven counties based on population. So when we met with the chief uh, local elected officials board a few weeks back, and we were asking them to renew this agreement, a number of them said, hey, I would love it if you would just come and explain to the fiscal court who you are, what you do. So again, this year, Kentucky and Works will spend about 12, 12 and a half million dollars. Most of that is federal, but not all. About a million five comes from the city of Louisville to run programs like the summer jobs program that we run for the city. Um, some of that money is outside money that we raise on top of that. But again, primarily a federal money through that Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. We help people get off of welfare using TANF dollars. We're running the food stamp employment and training program, and we're basically trying to aggregate every federal funding stream we can that has to do with workforce and try to help people get skills, get connected to jobs, or get connected to better jobs. So I'm really here just to make sure that I'm here to answer any questions, and otherwise I'm asking you all to approve giving the judge the ability to sign this fiscal agent agreement. Again, just so I reassure you, I've been lucky enough to be doing this job for 16 years. In my 16 years, we've managed over $200 million, no disallowed costs, no audit findings of any kind. So we run a tight ship every year. Kentucky and it works gets audited. There's a separate audit for a 501c3 subsidiary we have called Kentucky and Works Foundation. So they're each audited, they're each audited separately. We've shared copies of those with the judge. Happy to share them with you all if you have any questions or any <coughs> comments about that. Do you have help with the work ready community program? A little bit, but not very much. Mostly each county has been going after that uh, right. certification on their own. It's typically a partnership of the local elected officials, the school board, right, and anybody else that you can, or the school superintendent. We're, we're in board. progress. We're, we haven't quite made it to the next step. But. Yes. Um, <laughs> to be honest, most of the, the six counties are either in progress or have attained it. Jefferson County has never bothered to go get it just because when we do economic development, nobody ever asks us about it, right? The good thing is I think it encourages people to focus on their educational attainment levels, try to figure out ways to raise graduation rates and that sort of thing. We've got limited capacity to help. Primarily, we provide uh, mobile services for adults in your county. 
And oftentimes, and we also run a youth program called the Kentucky Youth Career Center that's run for us by Goodwill, and they serve uh, young people 16 to 24 out in this county along with the other five regional counties. So we do small things like that that may help you attain those numbers, but we don't do a whole lot to, to help otherwise. But they are, uh, they have a, an agent that comes out the library, I think it's the second and fourth yeah. Fridays. Mm -hmm. And, and they help people to build their resumes. They help them to uh, inter practice interviewing for jobs. Uh, one of the, the success stories that, uh, that they showed at, at, at one of the meetings uh, was a, a local Trimble County guy mm -hmm. uh, who had uh, uh, fell on some very hard luck and got into some very bad things, but this, this individual uh, met up with Kentucky and Works and mm -hmm. turned his life around. And it, it really uh, it makes made a big impact on me to see this individual uh, had turned his life around, and, and, and I was that's grateful. That's why I was asking guys. about the workforce uh, work ready community because uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he used to come to the meetings that we had. For right, Micah Howard. Micah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Micah. Yeah. Yep. So he he attended some of the meetings. And so Micah switched jobs, but we've got other people that are out right. here serving. Right, Charlotte Kearns and some others that you may have met. And we're happy to be out here and always trying to help, and I appreciate the judge for the shout out. I love this work because a lot of times people just need a caring adult, whether they're a young person that's gotten off on the wrong track or an adult that's either gotten laid off or is stuck or made some bad decisions and trying to figure out how to reinvent themselves over and over again. The people that we fund can help them, particularly in this kind of an economy because there are lots of jobs for people if they're interested in trying to work. So, so. so you need this in a motion to give you the authority yes. to go ahead and sign on to the agreement. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Kenny. No second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion on that, gentlemen? All those in favor? Uh -huh. all right. All right. Thank you all. Great. Thank you all very much. All Thanks right. for getting me on the agenda. Thanks again. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank, thank you. you. All right. We'll move right along, guys, to uh, the electrical work <coughs> to park for pitching mounds. Have I got, oh, I, how could I forget you, Tina? My gosh. The, <laughs> you didn't move to the bottom of the agenda. <laughs> You're going to leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about trash. So. <laughs> how did I forget that? Oh, that is right. hilarious. Tell everybody he's going to forget me again. You guys have uh, quite a bit of information from me. And I just really want to go over the one thing that I made public to a lot of people. And it, that was in Section 13. And it was not about the storage of unoperative vehicles. It was about the businesses. And so it's just the last paragraph. I think I sent you guys an all an email to sh let verify that it was just that part. And it says in there that there's a $50 permit fee and $500 a year. And Tommy Boas has come to actually, if there's any questions or if you all have any, he has comments or whatever. I don't know when Judge Todd wants to bring that up. Maybe public comments? And yes. Okay, so at the end we'll do that. But that's the only part as far as anything else. If you have any questions for me, I did bring this to show you guys. I have been collaborating with Oldham County because they have a beautiful recycling center there. It's not necessarily, it's more of a, I guess a transfer recycling, but it is absolutely wonderful. And so they are working with us and we're going to work on getting those bins or the trailers out yeah. and see where we can go. I know I'd mentioned to you guys we want to start something, but we don't want to be overboard and end up with a lot of recyclables that we don't know where they can go. So we came up with the agreement to begin with, and I'd actually thought this would happen, but it's paper and cardboard. And so I've already started working with some other areas and people that are not, you know, recycling the cardboard. So if there's any questions that you have for me, I have spent quite a bit of time talking to multiple people. Uh, the one thing I do want you all to look at is the notes about the uh, landfill. And that's just, I gave you all those notes, so. I got a question. Tim. Yes. I, I think the county mm -hmm. week cleanup was really successful. Mm -hmm. and I think you've done a good job on that. And I want to tell you that we are getting a full report. It right. just will not be till May because it's actually not due in the state until May 1st. So I wanted to kind of pull it all together. So I just want to say that. But I showed you my son and yes. myself and one of his buddies, we were doing our part to clean up. We right. were on the narrow the Burkhart bottom. Mm -hmm. And there's a dump down there. And you mm -hmm. can see the people dumping beds and we drug out a dryer and two or three other things to fill yes. up our truck to go throw in the, in the hopper. Yes. 
do we can we have do we have any signs or is it legal to put up signs no dumping no we littering do. or something we so do we already have signs and they're in right there's I think some, I pulled them there's out. some out different yes places. Um, and we can put a sign up there. I can talk. Yeah, I I'll talk it, to you tomorrow. I think it's different because there's like a pile here and a pile here and a pile here. Like, and it's right. And it's hard to get it. And I don't. It's, it's Sometimes, to Chris, what they'll do is you, you you put that spot cleaned up by no dump sign, and they go down the road and dump. Right. Or right. the cl closest hill that's steeper, and that's where they want to dump instead of putting on the side of the road where you pick it up. And I know. Exactly. I know it used to be like that on Joyce Mills Road. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And now Hard I, hill. I, I, Drove through there, even on Barth Hill, it, it's not near as no, bad as it used to be. I drove through it last week. Barth Hill was here. Neither is Joyce Mills, but this, but down there on the Merrills, yeah, yeah, the a solution, <laughs> right? And we did. Did you? We got them, right? Got them. Um, a solution, though, is from what I understand from Lisa Evans and mm -hmm. them, is we can actually purchase deer cams. Oh, I thought about taking mine down there. But. Put those up, but I did learn I from the deer cast. Never steal. looked, never shopped for a deer cam, okay? I'm not going to lie. But it was interesting because as long as it doesn't have the flash, right. yeah. they said, oh, you all already knew. So yeah. That is an option, and we have already discussed that. But I do have to find out where we want to put them because there are several places. But instead, I would rather go with the reporting them as an illegal dump. So that's what I did. Okay. I've already reported the ones that we found, right. uh, and I included Burkhart's Bottom. Okay. So right. I don't have anything after that. All I can tell you is that once they come and investigate, then they'll open it as an illegal dump. But it kind of helps us on our report. Okay. So as a report. Right. So it kind of the both solutions will be the deer cam and that but let's so, get with a yeah. sign work I mean, yes we'll put a sign up no i'll say i'll talk talk to mike tomorrow and see when okay. we can get one up do you or, have any in the office yes yes i also, found them. also if we go do this we don't need to be spreading around where we're putting them right yeah anything like exactly. that or even when we're gonna put them up right we exactly. done well, it we once before and got them both stolen right <laughs> and and we want them to move yeah but i do want to say on a positive note though everybody and I have more out of compliance letters out, but everybody that I have written a letter to that has responded has been super positive and it kind of makes my heart just sing because, you know, how oh, I get all emotional. But anyways, I had one guy that said, you know, I'm ashamed of myself. And I was like, I just really appreciate you coming in and, and talking to me and he ordered a dumpster and he's getting it cleaned up and, and so we're going with that. So it's been a great, it's been a great ride as far as our community and what they want to do. Is there any other questions about all the things I know I give you guys? I didn't realize I give you guys this many reports, but I just want to make sure you guys know where I'm at. And if there's any time you have a question, you know you can come and ask. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you very much, team. You know, most good. We're going to take a five-minute <laughs> recess. Anybody <laughs> has to go to the restroom, go ahead and do it now. <laughs> All right, this meeting will come back to order. Thank you very much. And we will proceed right along. Uh, electrical work at the park is where I'm uh, going to next. Uh, Mike Whalen did the concession stand uh, down by field number four, uh, getting a lot of positive feedback from it. And now we, this that I'm asking for permission to spend is to run electric to the pitching mounds on fields one and fields two. They are on the south side of the park, the Little League fields, and currently they are running extension cords from, from up around home plate to the pitcher's mound. They've been doing that 20 years. They have it for years. Yeah, and we'd like, and I would like to bury those, bury that electric. And this is what Mike Whalen uh, said he would charge to get that done. And this this yeah. box that's going to be put out there will be ground, low ground. ground. It's not going to be a trip yeah. hazard and it's water's tight to where it's not yeah. going to be full of water. Right, he says it'll be sealed up. Do. Yeah, sealed up very good. And I'm sure that's got some kind of GFI on it or something. Yeah. I had, a, I had a guy approach me on this. He's got his own con. Uh, contractor but it said he would dig the ditch for free volunteer his time if it, okay if you want to find out if and it, ask Mike if that'll take some off the bill if it'll take some off the bill I'll get a hold of this person and we'll go from there because he, he yeah do that because it, how soon can you get a hold of that guy tonight do that because I had planned on calling Mike in the morning 
right, I'm calling the night. See if he's still, if he's still, wait, if he's still uh, willing to do it. Yeah, and uh, and he's in the county. He's insured and everything. I'm sure. So little league started Saturday. Uh, at a good turnout. There's uh, it was a big help to have that other concession stand with all the electric going, but. Uh, just to make the park a safer place for the kids, I think, is what we're looking at. Yeah, we don't need anything out there like that to potential to be a hazard. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So, uh, can I get a motion to approve hey. this with the mm -hmm. with the idea that yeah, I'll call him. Get that done. I had a no, yeah, I'm fine with it. But I know call about the over the weekend. Scoreboard's not working. Right. PA system not working. A lot of, a lot, a lot of, of is there any way we can get Mike to look at them? Mike look I at them. Plan on asking him that. See what it would take. We might be a loose wire. And the uh, the uh, president of the little league had told me that the company that does the scoreboards, mm -hmm. they wanted to come in and and their price just to look them over was a whole lot. So, so that's why I said this. maybe Mike will look at them while he's here. Right. Because we're giving him a lot of work. Right. And he is really good at this. Yeah, well, with safety in mind and everything on this, I make a motion we, we we get this done. I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion on it? That is, if he could go less on for the ditch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll get a hold of him tonight. Whether, whether he can or not. Yeah, yeah. Right. Whether he can or not. And hopefully he can. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And all those in favor? Uh -huh. uh, thank you all very much. All right. We will move right along. Uh, to talk about the Veterans Memorial in the courthouse yard. Uh, we have uh, Rob Stilwell here tonight to talk to that. I know there was a conversation about where it's going to be and the uh, the placement of it. And I, I think Dan Washington had walked uh, some of y'all out there and looked at it <coughs> and things. Uh, so, Rob, or do y'all have any more questions about this? I, I, I'm not against the idea of it, but is there a way we can downsize it? I know the one out there is, I think from front to back is 26, 28 foot, 26. which is a very large structure. And uh, I was at Oldham County this weekend and they've got one in their courthouse yard, which is quite a bit bigger yard than what we got. And it's only 16 foot from front to back and it, it's plenty big. And it's for a memorial, you know, I think it would, would suit just fine if there's a way that we can cut the structure down. Magistrate Green, I definitely would like to agree, um, to address that. The gazebo that we're getting right now is currently donated by the school board, obviously, right. as you know. So what expenses are going to be one of the things that we got to look at as well. We did secure funding from the American Legion, um, several different organizations over in Madison. I'm also working with Henry County for more funding, but one thing that we haven't seen yet is anything from Trimble County, and that's why we were looking to put it over here. So if you have an idea in regards to helping us work with the budgeting on the gazebo, I would like to put that back in your hands and hopefully you can help us out with that. Well, it, would, it was my understanding y'all was going to move that gazebo. But you're now here. talking about downsizing, which is going to be at the cost of a new gazebo. Well, I, uh, you're going to have to disassemble it to move it, aren't you? They'll have to disassemble it, um, or what I was understanding is they were going to move it by flatbed across the street. When Dan first came up here, and I remember in January, he was talking about maybe coming off of what we already have and two benches and a, a memorial itself, which I think is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Then I seen him at a youth league basketball game, and he mentioned one a gazebo that was no more than 10 foot. And I, like Kenny said, I think 10 foot would be, it'd look good, but. You get into 26, 28 foot, we got 36 foot between the sidewalks. It's going to take up that whole side. It's going to take and up the whole side over here in the front. I'm not down here, but near the old country store. Mm -hmm. I understand that's where you want to put it in the southwest corner. Yes, southwest corner. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, you know, I'm like Kenny, I, you know, it's a great thing, but I think that one up there is just way too big for the yard. And I, and I think the reason we went with that is because it was free. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Well, I mean, you're still going to have the material. Yeah, that's true, Kenny. That's true. You know, and, and that's what Dan just, was saying. It was just take it a little bit smaller to move it. I'm not sure how. Last I heard, yeah, it was going to be transported by a, a trailer. If they do take it apart, that would be again another expense. Um, I know they were talking about having someone hired to disassemble it and then re-put it back together. 
but it would be cheaper to move it if we can do it as a whole together. So either way, it's going to be an expense. Yes. I don't think you can probably can't get it under the, the lines out here. <coughs> one thing that's possible. And that was one of the the concerns. Yeah. I don't know what center. I'm guessing 15 foot high. I didn't take the measurements on the uh, gazebo. I don't know it's 26, almost yeah, it's 28 long. Yeah, it's 26. Yeah. The center is what uh, huge. <coughs> What's the cost of a smaller one? Going smaller. Well, I think that's an idea that uh, we can talk about at Lodge. Uh, I mean, I think to bring it. And, and if you guys are good with a smaller one, bring it back. We'll present again. Yeah. And as far as our contribution to it, if we go if we go with the smaller one, which, which I said was was 16 from front to back, and it's a six sided structure. Open. Um, I'd like to see it on a concrete slab, and possibly that's what we could contribute to it is the concrete slab that it'll be sitting on. We would definitely appreciate that. To you. where, you know, you've just got the post coming up, and then you've got to, you know, put the railings on and the roof. And I, I know that's a lot of work, but I mean, what I can do for the next meeting is I'll be happy to come back with the uh, cost of if we have to do another gazebo and also the slab. We can all work together with the county and also with the uh, contributors who we're working with right now and come up with a nice monument for the And if, 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 if one of you uh, are in the neighborhood, stop at Oldham County and look at what the structure they've got up there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it's, of course, it's it's a metal post and it's really nice, but, but this out of wood could be just as nice, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah I would like to I'd see it hopefully see it locally made if we have to go that route. I'm, right. I'm sure there's somebody in, in our area here that can do gazebos. So you would bring something back with just a little bit smaller? That wouldn't be a problem. All right. Sounds, and, and, I, and Dan talked to the original people that put that structure up. I think it was put up by several of the community members. Uh, I know their names are on the plaque out, to, out in the front. Parents. Yes, it was parents. You know, I mean, there's, there's probably a way to get the community to come in and help as far as the labor part of it. Would that be good? Absolutely. Maybe we can talk to a builder here to donate some of it. As long as can we put like a plaque of his? Don't yeah, I, yeah. Donate it. I know that Matt Sandusky. He, he was uh, one of the people that we were looking at and talking with as well. And, and if I could for just a minute, how many Masons are in the room? Stand up, guys. How many veterans are in the room? And how many veterans are here? Yeah. yeah. Stand up. We recognize them too. This is this is this building, guys, that we're talking about. Thank you all for your Thanks, service. Bro. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. bro. All right, uh, we'll move right along. Uh, there was this, there was a discussion at the last planning and zoning meeting uh, about upcoming training for uh, planning and zoning board members. The training is $75 a piece, and the question to me was at that meeting, uh, was there money in the budget for it? I said I doubt it, but I thought I would ask fiscal court, what do you all think? Should we pay? For their training or do they pay for their own <clears throat> when does this training have to be done by no, if it's the frankfurt one it's in june, june, june. Yeah. yeah i mean as far and it, is that the only training <laughs> no but that's the only one that's local because i've our i'm going and i've already paid my seven five part of planning zoning but I mean, is that the only training? I know what I'm going to go to. So. Yeah, well, now they have all different yeah. dates. It goes until September 26th. But that was the closest, right? One like Corbin, one in Bowling Green. Yeah. They have to have eight hours. But yes. it can be any. That, that was my yes. question. It don't have to be eight hours at this. It could be eight hours of training. Comparable in other places. Or it has to be this eight hours on planning. That's it has to be eight hours on the planning and zoning. That's but probably the closest. Probably the and cheapest. it is the closest. Yeah. Well, guys, well, the work they've done, you know, they've been hard at it, and they ain't charged you anything for for the work they've done. Um, and, and I, well, yeah, I think, I think we should pay for their training. Is this something that uh, has to be voted on? The judge has the authority. To do well, we're spending the money, and I'm I'm asking you all for it because I. What is there about eight or ten people there that would be involved? Tom, Tom, do you know how many would be going? Five. Five. Seven hundred fifty bucks. 
I'll make a motion we pay for their training. All right, there we go. We have a motion on the floor to uh, pay for their planning and zoning training. And now, that motion's for the planning and zoning members. Yes. Yeah. 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 We appointed them. This is a yeah, kind of going over the budget. Is that why we're asking if they had it in their budget, they could just use their budget? Right. So are we asking to expand our fifteen thousand dollar a year budget? Well, we would, pay for this? I'm sure we would need to because their legal expenses are going to eat up the twenty three hundred that's left in this year's budget. Well, and that, that was what my question on the urgency of it because I know we're going right. to go into our budget talk and we'll, we'll know what we got going forward in July yep. compared to what we got now. So I encourage you to go. So we know what. We have a motion on the floor. Now we have a second. Is there any more discussion on it? We will do a voice vote. Are we going to have to amend the budget? Well, it depends on when the attorney sends their bill. To be honest with you, I mean, that's. She waits till July to submit a bill, and we're in a, into a new year. And she, and she, and she has not sent a bill. She has not sent a bill, has she? Not that I'm aware. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Let's see. It's three hundred seventy-five dollars. Well, I say seven fifty. My time's two, didn't I? Long day. Yeah, believe it. All right. So we have a motion on floor. It's three hundred seventy-five bucks. Uh, and I'm sure we pay mileage for board members only. For right, well, and, and Tina, yeah, she's well, that's part what of I'm just, yeah, yeah. For the members. Tom, does that number include Tina? That five? No, uh, no, it's just not. Included. All right, so just add seventy-five. Four fifty. Four and a half. Four fifty. Yeah. Four hundred fifty dollars. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Four thousand. Hmm. No, four hundred fifty. No, four hundred fifty yeah. dollars. Yeah. Me too, Kenny. <laughs> a long day. All right, go ahead. Chris Leiter? Yes. Kenny Green? Yes. J.D. Jones? No. Kirby Melvin? Yes. Todd Pollock? No. Sure. All right, we will move right along. That, that will show that page, and those guys can go on to training and, and get that taken care of. All right, and we've done the sheriff's uh, budget, so now we need to set a date for uh, our budget, guys, to have a budget workshop. That'll be a uh, called special meeting with uh, the purpose of working on the budget. I, I put uh, some budget information in the packets for y'all to look at. I've also ran a couple reports that I, that I didn't have in the uh, packets, but I'll give them to you that are comparisons over the last four years of looking at you need your supply well, my calendar in the office. Okay. That was and I, I, I'm thinking uh, that next week you and JD both are off on Tuesday. April 23rd? Yeah. Is that right? Come on. You're off too, aren't you, JD? Yes, sir. All right. Nine o'clock. Kirby, what time is good for you? Whatever convenient for y'all. I'll work with you guys. Kenny? So you want to do 9 a.m., guys? Crystal? I'll be in court, but I mean, if you. I mean, Talking over the budget. And only. That would be our only. Now, on that, uh, with that uh, in mind, we have to advertise this is a special meeting, this is open to the public. Like any other special meeting, yeah. okay. Good deal. All right. Well, then let's let's do that, guys. Let's set it up for next Tuesday at 9 a.m. And uh, we'll which one? Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I, I have been working on. It. Yes, I have been working on it, and it is a monster. <coughs> like 92 pages, yeah, that for that meeting, but I'm hoping May to have this thing to 
25. Just roll out. Mm -hmm. Or at least give it to you and take it home, look it over for a month. And next week? Next week? Yeah, uh, next Tuesday, 9 a.m. Since, since that's for the budget, can we also put a... Uh, you know, our administrative code in there. That's what Kirby was asking about. Okay, yeah. I, I don't think I'll have it ready by then. Well, but we can still talk about it. If it, but if not if it's not listed. Right. I will list it. Okay. If you want to talk about it. Yeah, because I think that's also budget related. Yeah, it is absolutely so, uh, because you get if into you put that in there, then we can get our input. Right. At that time, if that's okay. With that. Is that just a preliminary meeting for the input, or is that to solidify the changes? No. No, that's okay, preliminary. I have some changes that I would oh, like you to do. Make a Good. Meeting to. Good. On the code. Yeah, well, we need them. <laughs> we need changes, I mean. So Basically, next Tuesday. Well, if it's yeah. in this yes. one, if you want, I don't care. But if we're going to talk about it. Well, if you, if you can't be here for the administrative code, we'll leave that stuff off. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know when, maybe you could email yeah. everybody your thoughts. Your well, I can email it to you to put on the, uh, uh, put in, you know, Packet for okay, for the special meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that works. All right, so we'll have two things on that special meeting agenda: <clears throat> budget workshop and administrative code, or work on administrative code. Thresh it around. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move right along to the second reading of the golf cart UTV ordinance. Uh, Chris has brought up some good points that he heard from constituents. And uh, and Crystal, this is this was kind of a uh, an area I wasn't sure about myself. It's about people uh, crossing highways. Like if you go, Chris had a perfect example. You can in Lane and uh, Powell Hill Road. And Powell Hill Road, you're gonna you're gonna cross 625 to get from one county road to the other. The way we have it rolled up in the ordinance, you would not be allowed to do that. But That's right. Like state law, you know, KRS 189.515 would allow you to do that. Well, 189.286 supersedes. It's it's based upon golf carts and ATV or no, I'm sorry, UTVs. Okay. Um, and so I have a printout. I only made one copy okay. of that statute. If you want to look yeah, at I'll, it, but right. it does um, say not to cross a roadway at an intersection where the roadway, wait, hang on a second, where am I at? Just had it. No, the, okay. Can we read the one I have? Yeah, absolutely. It says a person may operate an all-terrain vehicle or any on any two-lane public highway in order to cross a highway. In crossing the highway under this paragraph, the operator shall cross the highway at as close to a 90 degree angle as is practical and safe, and shall not travel on the highway for more than two tenths of a mile. What's, what's that statute number? 189.515, section seven, subsection A. Only issue you're gonna have there is a golf car is not considered off road vehicle. That's been, the these fellas complaint was a bicycle can do it so yeah. why can't they if they well, I'm just saying it's yeah just I know I understand I know. Uh, and I'm, I'm either or I don't care right. if people ride on the road as long as they ain't they yeah. unsafe but yeah uh, uh, yeah but you have to make sure the golf court car meets the definition because it's not that that statute is basically for agriculture use. right okay, so, okay. which you know, that's what these fellas just brought it up like to me from farm to farm <laughs> Yeah. But it, it does allow for two tenths of a mile or from farm to farm. So. Right. But I, you know, I want if we got an ordinance, I want them to be able to, you know, cross it safely to one county road to the next one, which is right across the highway. I mean, it, was, it was their question to me, <clears throat> and that if they had, if You're they talking was about crossing the state highway, state highway. I mean, I just gave an example of one one intersection that that would, but there's one on every ridge, or two or three, however yeah, many. And that's a good one. one you that's a good one right there. there. Well, they're, yeah, they're, they're going to be running the state highways. They're right. Some of these places like King Street. I mean, yeah. uh, I like that. <laughs> Crystal something. Now, if we pass this ordinance, mm -hmm. that's, and, that, and it's going to happen, and say they cross the state highway, 
they get hit in that state highway, and this is we said they could cross. Where do we stand on, on something like that? <coughs> well, you understand what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, we got. That's why I brought up this point. I, mean, I don't know that the state ordinance can. County can't supersede. The, the, I mean, the county ordinance cannot supersede the state line. You can't say correct. that they can ride on the state roads. I'm not saying that, but I'm oh, just saying okay. what I'm they saying cross. is we're saying in, in our according to this statute, right? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they stay within that statute. As we're long saying as that you know, and if we say yeah, they can cross. Well, they code under state law. Okay. Right, so. okay. I just want to make um, right for sure. And right. the and the other question that they had was they must okay. Mm -hmm. Our ordinance says. You must have front and rear headlights, but restricted to only operate between sunrise and sunset. Mm -hmm. So if we had a golf cart or a UTV that passed the inspection, had the headlights and taillights, couldn't they not ride it at nighttime? Like That's they're doing anyway. Yeah. It's statutory on um, KRS 189.286, it's section four prong. D, the golf cart is being operated between sunrise and sunset, so that's statutory and we can't, we okay. can't say otherwise, it's a state statute. So, okay, near our Although golf course, on a county road, and they're out there driving on night, so, so. Yeah, that's <laughs> They're not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of campgrounds on Cooper's Bottom, mm -hmm. and go from one to the next to the next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about those campgrounds. Like, is it all together where it's like a private property that they're riding on, or do they? No, they get out on the highway and go three miles down the road. Shut up! I'm just kidding. What I mean, I want somebody to have a golf cart. If this is going to be a law, I don't want all of a sudden what you know what they're doing to be illegal. Well, I mean, it's already illegal. If they're at night, yeah, they're at night. It is. But for for a golf cart or a would it be all right for a UTV with lights, headlights? Yeah, it says. Between the hours of sunrise and sunset. Well, this is specifically as to the golf cart. Okay, now as for a that's UTV a, with. That's a playing golf thing, is what that is. Yeah. 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 Playing golf within those hours. Yeah. UTVs. But I brought my book. I don't think there's any legislation on that. But the, the trick here is some of those golf carts with the big knobby tires, yeah. you know, we have to figure out what the definition of a UTV is. Right. And for as long as it meets the, the definition of a UTV, then. You know, it's and, not a golf cart anymore. And pass our pass the sheriff's inspection and stuff. Right. And it's got the lights, working lights and stuff. They ought to be able to Stickers. ride. Ought to be able to ride at nighttime, right? I think so. I do too. I'm, Especially I during. I have no problem. Yeah, I don't, yeah either. I don't either. Well, I would. We can scratch that out of the uh, ordinance. I think if we scratch that, I think yeah. I think it would suit these guys. And, well, I will tell you that there's two, it looks like there's two differences because golf cart, we've got to be specific as to golf cart, but then all terrain, the statute that you indicated, and I forgot I had my book right here. Okay, that's it up. <laughs> But um, it does say that um, obviously it's talking about the headlight and the tail lights, and it should be illuminated at all times that the vehicle's in operation, but it also says that an all terrain vehicle shall restrict the operation to daylight hours except when engaged in snow removal or emergency road maintenance. Um, but then on here as well, the statute does not limit the speed limit for an all-terrain, which it should. And, well, I think in the ordinance we put 35 we miles put 35 yeah, We did because the golf cart, the, the statute for the golf cart is 35. 35, yeah. Do we need to have two, one for golf cart, one for UTV? Well, it, it could be like different sections, one for golf cart and one section for our ATV. To separate. Or, I'm sorry, kind of UTV. sticker says all-terrain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just put us that on there. Put the sticker on our all terrain, then that be the call it. It's one thing. Take out the word golf cart in the ordinance. Well, and, well, and the definition. No, we can't rewrite what a golf cart is. I would stick with the definitions that the state provides. Stick, right. yeah. What, stick what these on here. What is and what a golf cart is, because there might be a CC restriction or that might right. get some attention. That's right. And just keep referring to that uh, KRS 189, I believe. Mm, yeah. I mean, it's been happening down to yeah, God for years, but right. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just trying to make leap. Yeah, we can't restrict mopeds, can we? No, uh, it's not mopeds. You can ride those anyway. Okay. I think on our stickers that the sheriff would give them, or we give them, we ought to have all terrain on it, and that takes out. Yeah. Yeah. 
It would. Is so that, that how we want to do it? I mean, yeah. and if you put one on a if you put one on a golf cart, then you've done something wrong. Well, I mean, what do you think, Jody? I mean, you got a golf cart. I mean, well, I I've read different counties and stuff. I know the guy down the road's got like a golf cart, the battery operated, mm -hmm. not really a UTV, but. Well, there's some golf carts with seats on the back of them instead of place for clubs. So. Yeah. And some of them are jacked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big tires. I just think it gives them a chance for the adults from the county to, you know. Oh, I do too. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy. I do yeah, too. Yeah, I do too. And you do it legally. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get in a pinch if somebody gets hurt either. But, you know, but I think. I think you got to have different definitions. You got to also have golf cart in here, and then you also got to have the UTV, and that allow them to do the crossing the road. Crossing the road, because that's what the statute says. Well, we do have it defined differently as far as what they are. However, I agree. I think that we need to have two different sections indicating what golf carts are allowed. What what golf carts can what you can do on a golf cart and what you can do on an all-terrain vehicle. I think so too. That would answer all the questions that for you guys. That would answer. Yeah. Unless they had a golf cart and it was wanting to do that. Yeah. Just Define like what kind of golf carts? We <coughs> could just go with golf cart. Right. And you go with UTV. You know. Se separate from the definitions we have. That's the same definitions you have. I think we've got to keep the definitions okay. so that we stay with the statute. Right. They say you're allowed to do this with a golf cart, you're allowed to do this right. with an all-terrain vehicle. I see. Now, your golf cart can become an all-terrain vehicle if you jack it up and put knobby tires on it. Okay. So specifically Section 5, it should be, Section 5 would be regulations for operation of a golf cart, and then you would have another section for regulations for operation of a utility terrain vehicle. So it would indicate the exact requirements for each is how right. I would envision it, and I don't mind to draft that. Okay, Add that if to you that could, if you please. Want to, you know, yeah. it'd be and then when they come and get it inspected, you, what's the, you could ask what the intent you're going to do with it. Yeah. And I think that would cover it. How do y'all think? Sound good? Yeah. All right, that's what we'll do then. We'll, we'll hold this off and... I have to have a re first reading. And, and yeah, and that's what I was going to say. And we'll have another can first we, reading. Can we reread the first reading at the special meeting? Put it on the agenda? Uh, do you think you can have it ready by then, by Tuesday, Crystal? Then at our May... <laughs> well, you've got to publish it. Yeah. Well, no, wait, for the first reading. Yeah. Right, for um, just the first yeah, reading. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, get our first reading. Yeah, then we'll get that done. Yeah, have our second five. reading Crystal in May. We're going to do it. Thank you, Crystal. No problem. Yeah, thanks, Crystal. All right, there you go. We'll move right along, gentlemen. Uh, and I did the decals already. Uh, the letter from the Trimble Banner I did. Don't get upset, guys. Do y'all have anything else before we move into public comment? That was going to be a long night. All right, we'll move right into public comment. Anybody have anything from the public they'd like to add? I want you to stand up and introduce yourself and whatever is on your mind. This is concerning some of the EMS we brought up about the tornadoes. Is there a chance of getting a tornado siren out by the library or the extension office? Because once you get out of time, you cannot hear this siren at all. And second thing, is there a possibility of working with the state KDOT with this intersection here at the red light? They control some of the traffic on 42 West and 421 South because that's a, always a backup, especially with all the trucks you're getting coming through town. I don't know if you could put a turning lane in, delayed light. But uh, they should look at that intersection without approving it because of the heavy traffic we're getting. That's all I got. Thank you, Greg. I got one thing. Can I? All right, yeah. Jump I was wanting to ask Bruce. Did you want to talk about the ceiling of the sidewalks out here? Yeah. Uh, the concrete rule looks good, and I don't know much about the sealer. I, do we want to seal it? I mean, we got it early enough that I think it might cure it up for winter. But I, I was going to leave it up to you all what you all want to do. Can you get us? 
see what see, see what see what yourself. I I can find out because I I've never done it, but I can ask yeah. the concrete you, guy. You can either roll it on or spray it. Okay, it's, it's well, yeah. I am I has it. I am I has that sealer. Okay. I can do it. I, I imagine there's a certain time that I gotta wait sixty days or something. No, I think they you can do, do it, it pretty quick. Can you do it? Yeah. The sooner the better because you okay. have the dirt in the. Dirt. I didn't know if you had to wait on it or I can blow it off. Do it. Most of the time they do it the same day or the next day. I find out and then roll it on, on when nobody's up here. Yeah, if you roll it on, you know, save the whole spray on a windy day. Okay. But the spray it on, you probably throw your sprayer away because it'll gum it up. Gum it up, you don't yeah. Get it cleaned out real good. And was did you have? Was you going got the that's my knees here? No, Stacy Bruner. Stacy, okay. Stacy uh, asked me about changing stations in the restrooms over the the uh, courthouse. So I I just printed up. These are the most expensive ones I saw. So I knew if we if we went with that price, we could for sure get them lower. Are we not required to have them? Yeah. I think we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And you have to have the the pads that go with them, but you need one in both the uh, men's and ladies' restrooms. We have room for them. You you could install those, yeah. couldn't you, Bruce? Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion, please. Purchase baby these changing baby changing stations. stations. We have a motion to buy baby changing stations for the restrooms in the courthouse. Do we have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. As long as I ain't changed it more. All right. <laughs> All right. Back to public comment. Yes, let's get back to public comment. Who's next, Mr. Uh, a smaller version of Tom Boaz? That is me. Most of you all know me, those who don't know Tom Boaz. I have been contacted by several of the local shop owners and uh, towing business owners uh, looking for information, I guess. And of course, I had to research it to find out what was going on about the, the local ordinance that the administration has been working on. And uh, was it Section 13? It's Section 13, last that, part. It, it is very disconcerting to some of us because at any given time, 40 or 50 vehicles in my shop and to pay a $500 yearly fee. $50 per vehicle on vehicles that I don't own that's titled to somebody else, let alone if Sheriff Kelton calls me to tow an abandoned vehicle, you know, am I going to be reluctant to tow that knowing that I'm going to have to pay a fee on it and let it sit there and it's titled to somebody else personally. I can't do anything with it until they give it to me or the story vastly outweighs the value of the car, then I can tow it off for nothing because junk is nothing. It's not an easy thing to deal with and for the small businesses to be penalized by an old outdated ordinance. And it's not just us, you know, it's not excluding farmers who have multiple tractors sitting around everywhere and the state's a thousand foot within the roadway. You know, that's a farmer could probably get his equipment a thousand foot off the road. But my property is about a thousand foot long. You know, there's really nothing I can do with it to hide it from whoever's offended by the people who wrote the ordinance. You know, I, I can't do anything about that, but I, I do feel as shop owners who are supporting the county, employing people in the county, paying a lot of taxes, should not have to worry about the jurisdiction of that ordinance. Of that nuisance ordinance. Yes, and I guess I was, what I would say further than that all depends on how the magistrates feel about that as well. I think the whole idea of it is is if you do have a tow-in lot, you're supposed to have a, a fenced-in yard that's, that's hiding that from the view of the public. Um, that's the whole idea of it being in there. I, I've never I never read that in there, and I've never seen the only reason for a fenced-in yard for any towing company is for security for the companies when certain insurance companies <coughs> require them have guarded security for that particular vehicle. It's for no other reason other than that. It's not for... You know, an eyesore is not for, you know, the nuisance didn't reference that. A lot of people see that because certain insurance companies say, hey, look, you must lock this in and keep the people away from this car. But that, that's, it's the, it's the section, I'm not trying to, Betty, I'm just you know, explaining, right, there's right. a difference, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about, there is something, yes. It says, um, it's for businesses. It was just like a standout of, and it just stood out. I mean, I went and talked to Tommy. I mean, I, I went and talked to them. I was like, have you ever paid a $50 permit fee? And I've talked to you guys about this. And then 
they pay five hundred dollars. So it's not fifty dollars a car. It's for businesses. It's just this section about the fifty dollar permit fee. Like if I was supposed to be collecting that, I needed to know. And if they had ever done that, and they hadn't, I hadn't found one that had done that. And then five hundred dollars a year to run the business. So this was the section. Um, the storage part, from what I understand, is for like a junkyard, inoperable. We weren't even. T as far as I read, I wasn't discussing that as far as the towing companies. The storage part, I know what you're talking about, but there were sort of two different discussions. Does yeah, that make sense? Is a completely different business. Right, right, right. Be approved by the state. You can't right, but the question the at this, can it, Mr. Green, is, um, is this yeah. permit and this $500 <clears throat> to run their business when we don't have that for anybody else's business? Does that make sense? I just was shocked like when I read it I was like do you guys know about this and so then I started the conversation just to see where you guys wanted to go with it as far as business with us. I think the small businesses should have been should be met with open arms and that was some of the problem with the planning the zoning is just some of the red tape on the small businesses. <coughs> We're trying hard to to eke it out in this county and to prevent people from going to Madison. But if I had to pay fifty dollars per car and pass that on to the customer, it's just a little short trip to Madison where they don't have a labor tax and they don't have to pay that store. I don't think it's fifty dollars a car. From what I understand, is it? Am I right? It's fifty dollars for a permit fee. I got five hundred dollars per year. Year for these businesses. I read it five hundred a year and fifty dollars per car is what I read. I just thought it was fifty dollars one time. I may have misunderstood. That's why we're here. It's for the permit. It's for one time. That's what I was thinking. But the 500 is per year, mm -hmm. and it's in that ordinance. So if I'm going to enforce something, I want to know that it's clear, that that's stated. You know. And I just came to say that I thought it was uh, unwarranted. You know, we're trying to help this county in lieu of making the county grow to penalize any small business. And, and I've always had the view, even when I sat through the planning and zoning meetings. I was trying to pitch the idea as let's welcome these people. The EPA will control them. We should not try to dictate everything that they do and fight through this red tape for us to help the county grow because that's all that's going to help this county grow is the small businesses. We're not going to need industry or big business. So let's not make it harder on them. And not just because it's me. If I weren't part of this and people asked me to come up here and talk about it, I would be defending it just as staunchly. <coughs> these people are trying to make a living. They're not, they don't want to talk haul these cars in that have been abandoned or, or wrecked and people have no insurance that's a nuisance to us when we do haul it off for junk we're losing money it's actually a public service for the county for us to haul these vehicles in now if it's a it's a, a car that has insurance and the insurance adjuster is going to pay for all that that's a different situation but that's about a 50 50 shot when you get that the majority of the cars that i tow in or abandoned or the owner doesn't have insurance or they just, it just broke down and they left and they're from out of state. I don't yeah. believe this go, applies. Let's go. It's, what I'm going to ask is, what would you classify as a fair time to have a car fixed and, and gone out, out, out of the property? That's a very good question. Very good you, question. You know what I'm saying? I absolutely, I do. Because you, I have customers that come in that live a really nice life. They make good money. Both husband and wife work. Everything's smooth. I've had customers that their vehicle set at my shop for a year. They waited for their tax check. They saved money all year. They skimped on their kids' Christmas in order to afford the new engine for their vehicle. You know, there's people that don't have the luxury that some of us do. And it takes a long time. And they just bought this car at tax time from a, a used car dealership that stripped them, dressed up the engine, put the motor honey in it, and they bought it and it blows up. Well, they don't have any more money until the next tax time. And there are people out there that live like that. I uh, will. I can revisit that nuisance ordinance, but as far as the fence wise, I believe you need a fence up around it if you're going to, if you're going to keep them. I believe this is about inoperative motor vehicles. That means they don't operate. I mean, this is about storage because it talks in there about removing the fuel from it and all that. And, stuff. and I agree. And the, motor, the beginning this should of that. Not apply. But do you see that bottom part yeah, doesn't yeah, seem to be. Yeah, but just because that bottom part's there, this does not apply to a person. If this is the case, then every time that a uh, our farmers there get done with their tractor, they need to remove all the oil out of the engine. But when you read it. Am yeah. I, 
when you read it, it does not read like that. It's where I've read well, it multiple times. Well, I'm looking times. at storing and operating motor vehicles. That means they don't operate. Sure, sure. If it's not clear enough and it's left open, but that bottom part talks problems. about. Well, he could probably start half of them and move them well, six I inches. Think, I think that's the, there. what you're no, misunderstanding there. Inoperative means that you cannot start it up and move it. But he probably can start every one there. Yeah. Or he can probably and, move and it. Start, start, I can start about anything there. If I got about parts, I can start it. Right. And, that, and I think they're talking well, think about the ones that are setting that been sitting there for years and they're not going to I think it was all I don't repairable. think it was ever aimed at businesses of any kind I think it was aimed at at poor subdivisions the guy's got 30 cars in his yard and that's an eyesore because it's a nice subdivision I don't think it should be I think a matter of fact businesses of any kind should be excluded whether it's a excavation company or a mowing company that, that parks all of his mowers with tarps open for the winter but he's going to use them when it comes spring and it, uh, well, yeah. Time restriction wouldn't be fair because we have eight month winters anymore. I mean, it, it, it's, it should be we should be exempt. Any business should be exempt from that. The way I read this, this is for like a junkyard. Junk Even yeah. if you keep on reading read down more into the it, what's actually you're not yeah. well, it, it was presented to me. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like says, is that my business? So I came prepared to defend that. I didn't read says, the whole thing because I did not have it all. Right. Okay. Well, it's yeah, it's yeah. been law since like 2007, I believe, yeah. is when the nuisance ordinance went in. It says I just wanted you guys to look at at least that section because I thought it was unclear that it's the it's money it. and I had told you about it right you go back here it says any person holding a state <laughs> permit authorizing the operation as a recycling establishment shall within 90 days of the enactment of this ordinance which was in 2007 I remember reading it for of this ordinance to apply for and obtain a county permit as set herein Okay. So you have to have the state permitted junkyard permit. It sounds like it. Then you have to get a county all. permit after okay. yeah. that. That, 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 is, and I, that will leave most of us business here because nobody has a junkyard. Exactly. So that's probably why it's not in use because but I doubt. I feel like <laughs> we should restate like somehow huh? in there if you want to state junkyard like or whatever. No, it would be, because be, we don't have a county permit yard. for me to go and get a county. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So I mean, I read it several times. So, well, my thoughts are that I'm following both. I don't think that it's intended for businesses. I think it's for a junkyard. I think that yeah. it is inoperative motor vehicles, just as it says. Like a savage. It's it's not like really in, it's not really intended for mechanic shops. Okay. That's that's, okay. is, that's what I'm. I think it goes from here. We skip mm -hmm. a paragraph, then it goes to there. So, right. So I think it it stayed in there somewhere a certain period of time if it's been inoperative. For a certain period of time, I don't have a copy of it with me. Because everybody, Kirby and I have talked about this. Everybody's going to come up with the same statement. You know what I mean? It's, it's. You understand? I mean, they all are going to say, "Well, it's not but a junkyard. It's, it's not a business." It. But it's, you know. Right. A, a junkyard is, is is a completely bit different business. A friend of mine looked into it. I helped him look into it, and it is, it is quite an application. You have to produce a million dollars worth of assets before you can apply. Mm -hmm. To get a junkyard license. So if we have someone acting as a junkyard, then we should go with forward with that. Then, no, then, yeah, yeah. Then then go forward. Forward. Okay. And I hate to blow Crystal's plate up, but you need to get with Crystal and go over these issues and what does this actually say? Because a lot of times you can read it one way and I can read it right. another way, and, and Tom's reading it a different yeah. way. And, you know, and the car that, like Tom said, you got a car sitting down there for a year. I mean, what do you, what's, what's your time limit on in Auburn? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. well, it's one of those things. I'm on the board of code enforcement for the city. And we went to a training with, uh, there are four people came down from Frankfurt. Uh, who this is, they train everybody that's on the board of code enforcement for each city. And she's talked about motor vehicles and what you can do with them. Like, even if it's at my shop, say, say this applied directly to me, and if I didn't want to pay that fine, I had to clean it up. I, by law, cannot do nothing with those vehicles because it's titled to a person. Someone else. Mm -hmm. I, I can't step on that property and touch it. It's not like not paying property taxes on your house and somebody buys it at the courthouse auction. You don't make recompense. They put a lien on it, you lose your property. You still can't do that with the vehicle. If they don't pay property taxes, you still have no claim. On the, they don't pay property taxes on the vehicle, mm -hmm. you still have no claim to that vehicle. It's titled to them. So if I wanted to clean up to spare myself from these fines, but were at me, I would be in a sticky situation where so I if couldn't you, do if anything. If you tow my vehicle and I don't pay you to tow it, you can't put claim to it. It all depends if it's on the roadside or uh, it's 
Yeah. He Typically, would know if, if we call, they'll, they'll tell them. We get a lot of a lot of uh, abandoned vehicles in the county. But what they they have to send out certified letters, which is what seven dollars a piece. They have to send out two of those and put it in the paper. And I mean, it's lengthy it's a, process. Yeah. That's, that's lengthy worth process. me getting a title for to recoup my my, my, my expense. Right. And it's a piece of junk. I'm, it's not worth doing any of that too, but yet if it's titled to somebody else, I'm still kind of stuck with it until the storage outweighs what they're willing right. to pay to get their car back. Right. You know, if it's a hundred dollar car and it's set there for a year, they owe me nine thousand dollars in storage. They're not coming after that car. I can junk it if it's over ten years old and not worry about it. Right. But the, the problem mm -hmm. is, you take one car down, it's not worth a trip to Louisville to scrap the car. Right. It's, you know, it's you not worth it. You haul two on the road back at seventy five dollars a ton. Yeah. To pay me or pay one of my guys to drive to Louisville for a hundred bucks. Yeah. It, it's just not enough. It's not worth. You got to wait till the the scrap is right, and then haul it all off at one time, and you still lose money. But you get the lot refreshed and then go back up. And it's like I said, it's basically a public service. Every abandoned vehicle I throw in costs me money at the end of the day. So to pay me on top of that, it's just not just. Can you sell parts off of? After a certain time, when the storage outweighs the price, I, I can sell parts off of it, but I don't want to get into the business of putting old used parts on a customer's car and it goes Well, I mean, if somebody minutes. wanted to come in there and buy a part off of it, you can sell it. And after a certain time, I could, but I typically don't do that. You know, if it's a, if it's a, a fender or a bumper or something before it's a used starter or something, I don't want to be a junkyard, so I'm not going to sell used so salvage down parts. Like scrapyard. <laughs> and like, and then, you're put, then you're putting yourself into a scrapyard. And, and I, want, I want to have a good reputation. It's hard for a good reputation, so I don't want to put a new starter on their vehicle in the last 10 minutes. Well, well let's put this on. Now I'm going to start again. I don't understand that, but I'm saying if somebody comes there and buys a bumper fender, now you start in this junkyard. Yes. Well, and then the fence goes up. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm saying I really don't sell it. I just haul it okay. all off. I appreciate it. I just I wanted to clear that up because I have talked to several people that have had inoperative vehicles, both businesses and not, and that has been an issue. I've heard from every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> they have all called me to, to come up here. And well, the business to, people have. I'm yeah, sure yeah, the others have it because they have. The <laughs> what the other places say? Meskers and Flintstones. Oh, they were all, they they started actually. We started with Mesker talking about it. What was going on? What was the process? And so, yeah. Thanks for your time. Comments. I appreciate, appreciate you appreciate coming. It. And Tom, you look great. How much weight have you lost? 71 pounds. Way to go. I appreciate man. you coming. Way to go, Tom. Run the marathons before long. All right, what do we have next? I got two questions. All right, Kenny. First is about the planning and zoning. Uh, you all passed uh, the training. My question is, we're going to start spending tens of thousands of dollars on this planning and zoning in August. But yet we cannot fix our county road because it's tied up. That's the one question. The other question here is last month, last board meeting, there's a match came up to you and made a comment that I thought was a defensive about the camera. And the word was, I me. want the camera out. Shut me, sir. Me. Let me finish yeah. and then I'll, no. I'll shut up. Okay. Uh, about, uh, I want the camera out. To me, that was offensive because that's telling me one thing. Either the man wants the camera out because he's got something in there that he wants to get out without the public knowing. He should have went to the other managers and said, the camera's still in there, what do you think we need to do? We need to come to the judge. As a taxpayer, that's how I feel about that. I'm finished. Now, as a taxpayer, you got Texas license plates on your truck out there. So now you're telling me that you're paying taxes here Sorry. on your vehicles? Yeah. That you are? Yes, sir. I'm opposed to the 15% tax that you proposed and got passed. I'm opposed to 3.2% on the cell phones. But the Secondly, my primary home is in Texas. It's legal. I checked with the county I clerk. just said, oh, but you're running Texas plates. Mm -hmm. so, so, but you're, but you're paying down there, not up here. Mm. No, I'm not paying taxes down there. Property tax, no. Uh, I know they don't, have, they don't even have a state tax in Texas. Uh, I know that. But and what's, what's that got a bearing to do on this question? Well, just like the cameras in there. I talked to these matchers about taking that camera out. No, not when you was talking to the judge. Not what I overheard. Me for Hey, I can do, I can talk to this master tomorrow, talk to this guy tomorrow, and him tomorrow without us all being together. And, we, and if I come up and say, hey, we want the camera out, we want it out. Now. You said we. You, you, you said I, 
at the time you was talking to the judge? Well, now, I'm sorry if I didn't get a principal correct. I, I don't know you talking to any other judge. I'm, I'm done and move on. I'm done and move on. I mean, that's how I felt as a taxpayer that you had something in there that you wanted to get out before anybody. I have nothing in there. I don't know. That's what I. I have nothing in there. Right. But I'm done talking about the camera. All right, we got another public comment. I see a hand. I don't see a body. So stand up. All right. Oh. To him. Yes. He thank you, Tina. Tina has. About his license plate. Yes, Number Tina one, has something. If you claim Texas as your residence, do you have a Texas driver's license too? Oh, you talk about me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you told me. If you have a Texas driver's side, license sure. and a Texas plate on the back of your truck, I believe you have to have your voting in Texas. We can call and we can check, but you yeah, never Yeah, I will check with me. on that, but uh, uh, that we got that But there is an. Uh, you can go on the computer and you people can report you. It's called Freddie Freeloader. If there's any plates in this county that is another state, mm -hmm. they can report you for living here and not paying your taxes yes. here on your voter vehicles. Right. Uh, question on that. When I brought to the uh, to the county attorney down there, not county county clerk, and I said, "All right, my primary house, my living. What, where do I put it?" She said, "It doesn't matter." Which county clerk did you talk to? Livingston, Polk County. Be more than happy to give you the clerk's number. Okay. And I said, and I okay. had a meeting with them on. Okay, Thursday. guys, we're going to move on. Let you all talk about that some okay. other time. I'll with you. My other thing on is, another. I want to know if you guys would approve Thank the poll workers training um, and the poll worker pay because our election is May twenty first, and I would like Vicky to be able to have it in plenty of time where she doesn't have to rush, and then the poll workers don't have to wait on their pay. Do that and I wondered if you could approve that. I thought we'd already done that. Have you already done it? Have we already done it, Susan? <laughs> Let's, we're going to do it again just in case. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think we did, but we just, like I thought we did too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we got a motion to second. All those in favor? Uh, 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 all right. Hey, we, Tina, yes, are we going to be able to use the new devices yes. and all 12? Yes, we will be using the new devices. We're one of very few counties in the state and that's the going to use them countywide. Yeah. Uh, the company promised me that they're getting me the other 10X unit because we we had to send one off because the case was damaged. Okay. And they said that within the next yeah, week, we should get yeah. that back. All right, there you so. go. Thank you. All right, any more public comment? Go ahead, Wayne. Yeah, on this uh, ATV and UTV, uh, I may have misunderstood it, but how you, there actually be three deals you're talking about there, golf carts, ATVs, and UTVs. No, no ATVs, no ATV at all. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, thank you. You can't, you can't license um, If you have a mattress, please oh, do not throw yeah. it out for the garbage I'm man to take the, it. Like the I forgot and to stuff. say this. Yeah. It is um, really important that you don't because they will not take it and it'll just lay there or it'll end up somewhere else. But we have a solution for you. All you have to do is wrap them in plastic and it's very hard to do. So we bought, actually City of Milton bought mattress covers and they're selling them for $2 a piece. I have picked up about five of them from them. So if you guys need them, contact me if you need to throw a mattress away. Because the pick, the road, the trash hmm? people will not pick them up. Just want to say that. That's awesome. Sorry. Are the bed yes. bug resistant? Thank you. That. Thank you. <laughs> what did he say? Are the bed bug resistant? They, they are. Plastic bags. Yeah. Yes, they will put them. If you put them in the bag, they will pick them up. Yes. Yes. All right, do we have any more public comment? Jacob, go ahead. All right, yeah, I would just like to address the letter that you brought up. Uh, on last week, I believe, or the week before when the special meeting was. It was the Wednesday before is when you sent out the agenda. The 25th. I do appreciate the timeliness of that because that's great seeing that we have a judge who likes to get things done in a timely manner. Uh, then we had the special meeting. Then that Thursday is when I sent the complaint letter. Uh, according to the statutes, you have three business days to respond. After I hadn't heard from you until next Thursday, I sent you an email confirming that you received the letter and that you were going to address the the complaints that I had listed, which you agreed to. And I would just like to say that as part of this, I didn't take issue with the whole privacy thing. I thought what you all did was was okay in my book, in that you didn't have an employee 
I just took the exemption, the problem of the exemption that you cited going into the closed session. And that was what my issue was with because I thought it fell underneath another part of the law. However, we could argue that before the AG, and the AG would probably say it's moved at this point. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you all were aware of that and that whenever you set the agenda for a special meeting, that the AG does say that it has to be specific enough to where people can uh, discern what's going on. You can't just be vague and say, road department, sheriff's office, county court. You have to be specific on what you're actually looking at doing in that meeting. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Anybody else? Talk about anything. Motion to adjourn. Uh, One more time. Oh. Can we get a, a system in here where we can hear the people talk, like yeah. speakers back in the back? Because I Put and I'm microphone. pushing on the women. <laughs> they got their back to her. And we can't hardly hear them. It I don't know much. about the back. It is. It is hard to hear. And I can help you guys look for some kind of all right, do that. I will just be glad yeah. to get it because I mean, I can get it for pretty inexpensive. Some kind of table. So, yeah, something. Can you say you can't hear me? Oh, excuse me? Oh, you can't hear me. I can't hear you. You had a speaker, I can hear you. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor to adjourn. Do we have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye